Hello there, my name is Polish Links. Welcome to SC2VN and let's continue with the story of StarCraft and esports. Morning, Mach. Yeah, morning, morning. And Olu Stan fails to notice my arrival. He's too focused on his white whale. Where's that? Trying to wrangle some of Volt's replays, I guess. We couldn't find him at the shock team house yesterday, so I spent the rest of the evening moving out of the crash house. That sounds awkward. You're not wrong. Well, Reva's probably gonna be late today. She probably needs to go back home after. I try and fail to stop myself in time. The allure of Pop Safari now fails to hold Stan's attention. She slept at your place. Did you punk her? No, it wasn't like that at all, we just practiced. Uh, genius move, man. She seems pretty... Uh, okay, okay. Uh. I follow up the shoulder punch with a pat and then take note of Arthur's serious expression. Uh, you didn't actually do anything, right? No, I didn't! Good. Don't get involved with your teammates. Huh? Why? Seriously, I'm sure you can figure this one out on your own. If you break up, things get awkward. If you get together, things get awkward. If you break up, the team loses a player. It's bad news, even in the best case scenario. She came over to watch me ladder. It got late and she fell asleep during a long game, that's all. Then there is no problem. Being a coach means I get to deal with fun stuff like telling you who you can and can't date. Stan's hand slings for his phone, but I still snaps for attention before he, the Protoss can get back to tapping away at animal bubbles. Enough Stan, time to for practice. Mach, you too. Right. By noon, my wrists are sore from a morning of anti-rush defense. Without anything specific to practice against, Stan spammed me with game after game of proxy gates, cannon rushes and one base all-ins. I feel prepared in the incredibly unlikely case that Bold risks the match on something like a two-gate. Stan's a one-note protoss, but he plays that note pretty damn well. Can you try something else for a change? My brain is starting to fry. <laughs> I'm not even warmed up yet. You're only able to defend against these builds because you're expecting them. Obviously, the point of the cheese is to catch the opponent off guard. What's the point of cheesing when it's literally all you can do? Uh, you don't understand. Cheesing is an art. An art that I will be the first to master. Seriously, Paul. Well, now he needs to prepare for more just your one base always. Try playing standard for a change. Ah, uh, fine. Just then, Jet steps through the doors of Golden Zone Fire at a fair, fierce pace, saving me from more of Stan's abusive builds. But the relief I feel at her arrival shatters when I catch sight of the figure at her heels. Before I can form a question Bolt's presence, both he and Jet are standing before us. She shots an annoyed glance at him before speaking. He insisted on speak with you before he would agree to play. <coughs> Bolt lifts his chin at me. Suffering the moment, I need something from him, a show match, and he's well aware of the power he grants him. So, uh, still desperate to make a name for yourself. I match his aloof expression with a hard one, determined to show that he can intimidate me. Our sponsor needs a demonstration of the team's potential, it's not about me. Don't kill yourself, this is all about you. I'd be facing. Jet, Axel, or one of the wannabe dishwashers you managed to clown into signing if it wasn't. Do you think I haven't read what they are saying online? I draw in a sharp breath, two bolts amusement. He shakes out his wrist and offers a shrug. I normally have better things to do than play out a show match in a loser game. But hey, you've caught me at a good time. My next Brood War match isn't for a few weeks. Could just see time, Tom to brush up on my SC2 and ship you back across this Pacific. Do you know that my team manager won't even let me play Star 2 in the shock team house? They say it's distracting to the other players. I reach for another calming grab, but find myself choking on rage instead. 
Is that smile of his? What? You came here just to talk some trash. Quit wasting my time and accept the match. I accept and I do you one better than you'll do me. Catch. Bolt puts something out of his pocket and tosses at me. My reflexes don't fail me and I snag the small black object in Minder. When I open my hand I find a thumb arrive. What? 50 replays. Study them all you like. You'll have no excuse when you lose. By the way Jet, let me give you a tip. Next time you go behind my back for replays, don't try to get them from, from someone that shares my feelings on your opportunist bullshit. Your foreign mascot is lucky I'm feeling generous. With an infuriating air of superiority, Bolt turns to leave. My teammates visibly shame, share my frustration, but none of them rush to my defense. Maybe it's for good reason. I can't keep relying on Jet or Axel to bail me out of trouble. Beating Bolt isn't their responsibility, it's mine. Hey Bolt! He turns, mid surprise showing on his face when I flick the thumb drive out of my hand and at his feet. I won't lose to you again, remember it. Tell yourself that! He shows his teeth and a smear can crush the flash drive under his heel. Just like you told yourself you could qualify for VSL. Bits of plastic and metal are all the remains of the USB when he leaves his foot to continue on his way out. The tension remains long after Bolt's departure. Finally, Chant enters my personal space, eyes sharp and locked with mine. Why did you do it? We needed this replace! Axel steps forward and places a hand on Jet's shoulder. Bolt was trying to get into Max's hand. You know that Jet, it was the right call. Dang! He really didn't feel like leaning over to pick it up, huh? Those things are like 10,000 won. The equi uh, quip earns him a perplexed day, stare from Axel and Jet, and too distracted to even react. Whatever, Mark, if you're going to be a showman, say it for when it will gain you some funds. That gives me an idea for a summary after you beat this guy. Get 10 flash drives and... Hey, stand. I've got a better idea for a ceremony. We sign a contract with Enoch and move into our team house. How's that sound? That's not as funny as what I had in mind. Enough banter! Get back to practicing! Can we take a break for something? I need a minute. We don't have a minute, especially without replays. Practice now! I quietly follow Stan's lead back towards the PCs. Axel and Jet move in and take their seats behind us. From the top and no rushes, Stan. I have absolutely no clue how anyone can practice for more than 10 hours at a day. My wrist age, my arms hurt, my subconscious won't consider anything but unit compositions and attack timings, and I can't get bold stupid smirk out of my head. Worse still, with Jet forcing Stan to play standard, our practice wasn't productive at all. She didn't seem happy with me even when she left to meet with the producers at the VSL studio, but after so many games it becomes impossible for me to focus. What else are we supposed to do? Reva doesn't seem like she's in practice for any race but Terran. Do I even have a chance against Bolt? Did I ever in the first place? Dude, how does anyone macro? It's boring, exhausting, and makes you consider zillion variables. Economy management is so stupid. You just described what StarCraft is supposed to be, minus the boring part. Well, I don't like it. It's I'm at my best when I can focus macroing. Who says I should have to play a game past the 10 minute mark? No one, as long as we're okay with an awful win rate. With practice done for the day, I agreed to join Axel and Stunt for dinner while Jet deals with logistics and set up for the match. I led down a smoky side street where greasy and fragrant smells mingle. My experience with street food so far hasn't been great, but I trust the judgment of Stunt and Axel. Row after row of stalls are thick with customers clamoring for a hot meal. The three of us browse the various offerings before stunting this, or one in particular. Do you like Bindadok? Bindateok? Mach? Sure, yeah, whatever is fine. The single cook meaning the stall cleaves through customer order faster than I think possible. 
It is long before we are walking away from the stall, paper wrapped pancake in hand. We settle for a seat on the curb, far enough away from the food traffic to avoid being trampled. Reva's going to run into trouble with Janet if she doesn't show it Golden Zone Fire again this week. Eh, yeah, she can only help Mark so much. Besides, it's not like she can skip out on practice at the team house. Have you ever been inside the team house stand? The Protoss forces down his foot with a thumb to the chest. No, oh, but I've seen pictures! It's an informal setting. It isn't hard to sleep in or slack off, but the type of people that do that usually don't become programmers, or at least don't last long as one. We still don't have any subs, isn't that going to be a problem? Let's worry about one thing at a time. There won't be much need for subs if we don't do our best this week. Still, the team is tiny, five people including management. Jet wasn't kidding when she said she wanted a lean team. The sudden thought of a team Gorshiwon is almost enough to make me smile. Yo, Axel, what did you do with all your prize money from Broad War? That's kind of a personal question, isn't it? I don't mind answering. Spend about half of it on general living expenses and stuff for my family. The rest I've got saved. Lame. What's the point of Phoenix if you don't spend them? I've earned 40 million one or so. Not counting salary. It may sound like a lot, but it's easy to go through if you aren't responsible. Thief. Deaf to the sense Axel is trying to talk into him, Stan stares off into space with stars in his eyes. If I want a VSL grand final, I'd be a car, a house, a new PC! He continues, routing off a list of a dozen superfluous objects in a way that only someone who has lived without worrying about paying a rent can't. can. Axel and I both take the chance to eat without interruption. Chet still got the 100 million one from the first VSL championship, yeah? That plus some, probably. Why? I wonder if I could convince her to trick out the team house. Feel free to ask, just make sure I'm there for her reaction. What about you, Mark? What would you do with your big winnings? I don't know, save it or something. Just like me. And I thought that only the chicks on our team were boring. Don't forget that all the time you spend climbing StarCraft's ladder, someone else spends climbing the corporate ladder. If you're only in esports for the money, just get a real job. It's not a big deal. After I make it big as the next Protoss Bondwa, I'll just get a job as a coach or a team owner. I've got it all planned out. There's no convincing stunt at this rate. Not that I can blame him. I wasn't any more responsible when I was his age. Like most people. With a final bite, what's left of my bindaet teok is little more than grease on a napkin. I'm joined by my teammates when I move to toss away the trash. Heading home, Mark? Yeah, gonna ladder for a bit and then sleep. Getcha, I'll be at the cafe by then. Don't be late. Not like we have anything better to do. <laughs> the three of us turn separate ways out of the hallway. I endure the walk back to my apartment in silence. I stare at my cell phone, the light coming from its screen bright enough to make my eyes glaze. Then it goes dark and I slide my thumb over its screen to wake it. I've repeated the ritual four times now. My head falls back against my chair and I close my eyes. Why do I feel like this? It's been almost two weeks since I last spoke with my parents. Admittedly, I've been busy with StarCraft since I met Axel and Jet, but I'm still overdue for a call. My finger hovers over the contact number. Before it can fall to dial them, the phone escapes my hand and falls back onto the desk. Does it really matter? I don't have much to say. Hi, Mom! Is that there? Yes, everything is fine. No, I'm not dead. No, I haven't given up yet. Telling them about the team might be not for nothing. They will pretend to share my happiness in a victory, but there is always an underlying cynicism to every congratulation from them. A win isn't a win, it's another cramp leading me to chase a pointless esports dream and away from the life they think I should be living. It feels wrong to be cross with them, they raised me, paid for my existence, it'd be an ingrate to ask for more. And yet I do, 
I want to accept my goals for what they are, to hope for more than that we I will grow out of StarCraft. It's the, sh uh, it's the same with my friends from high school. They pretend not to, but I know that they look down on me. It's a video game. Why do you care so much? Come on, man. It's time you grew out of this. When it is right. So, well, that's actually why none of my friends and no one in my family you know I somehow record for YouTube and crap. Because I know that will happen. Something like that will happen. When it is right to give up on a dream, how many failures does it take before you say, Alright, I'm done trying, I'll just take a job at the family business. If I lose to bolt, should I quit StarCraft? Would be nothing but pride to continue on. Even if I win, what then? What if the team does poorly? What if the team does well, but I hold them back? Will StarCraft 2 even last as long as Broad War? What if there isn't any prize money left in the scene in a year from now? What if I start to hate the game? It's wrong to think this way before such a high stakes match, but I can't help it. I know what matters and I know what I have to do. Why can't I just do it? I carry myself on the bed and bury my face in my pillow. Somehow I think I'm finally starting to understand what Mr. Yeon was saying. And with that, let's end the episode here. We'll start the next day in the next episode then. So, see you. Bye.